Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for tuning in on this Friday's with Phil, another edition of Friday's with Phil with the USBC. I'm Philip Dunn, the Program Manager and Community Administrator at Eureka, uh, your host for today on Friday's with Phil, and I am joined uh, by the amazing Lisa Freeman Williamson of WTF. Well, wait a minute, that stands for Weigh the Facts, so don't get all been out of shape when you hear WTF. <laughs> Uh, we're excited to have Lisa join us. Lisa, how are you today? I'm really good. Thank you for having us. Good, good, good. Okay, Lisa, I want you to jump right in. Just sort of give us an introduction about you and your company that you found. Okay, so I'm Lisa Freeman Williamson. Um, I have been doing electoral work for just about three decades. Um, I was first able to cast my ballot for the Reverend Jesse Jackson in his initial presidential campaign, and that changed my life. To be able to vote for a man that looked like a good outcome for my community, again, it was life-changing. Uh, we founded WTF in 2012 because we were starting to see a decline in the enthusiasm. In 2008, everybody was about it, about it, voting. For everybody loved President Obama, but we st started to see a decline in 2012. So we wanted to really um, do something to impact that. So our first action was called I Elect Early, and it was an early vote initiative. And we were able to um, affect a 25% increase in voter turnout for that day. So WTF was born from that. Um, and we are really about, we are a social enterprise about marrying the electoral and the economic. So those two things can really change our community. And as you and I were talking earlier, the dollar and the vote really are what can make a change in our community. And that's what we're about. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, you know, I, I found you through Eureka. Tell us a little bit about how you came to be on the Eureka platform. Oh, it has been a phenomenal experience. They have, and I've been, I am the child of an entrepreneur. So I've been around these concepts for my whole life, but to be introduced to this platform and like I was sharing with you, the three circles and being able to really talk about what your business does in a succinct manner that gets people to understand. The four quadrant method, I'm, I'm working on that piece and that's gonna change my life because it's like, you got to just say th these are your goals and get to those that I already see the trajectory of which it's changing the business to be able I to really it. hone in and focus. I love it. It's one of the reasons that uh, United States Black Chamber is, is definitely in partnership with Eureka and its major sponsor, Comcast Rise, is because of all the different resources, the, the programming, the training uh, that they offer to the different recipients, the Comcast Rise recipients, and then, of course, to all the businesses that make their way to the Eureka platform like yourself. So uh, I'm glad to hear that you're benefiting uh, from the platform that we both uh, actually enjoy. So, okay, we got to dive a little bit more into WTF because that name is so catchy. And, and tell us how you landed upon the name WTF. So again, we wanted to reach people in the electoral capacity where they are. So what is what are we always with? We are now always with our phones. So we were talking about, okay, so we want to be able to have them go somewhere and just get the information. So we were like, okay, what's a, what's a text phrase that everyone uses? And we came up with WTF. And as I said, we didn't know how prescient we were being because these last four years were really about WTF. So our WTF is the way the facts because we want to get you that information and allow you to use the electoral process to make your life better. Because if you don't do politics, politics does you. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And, and, and again, WTF stands for way the facts. The facts. I, I know uh, my kid picked up on it on social media one day and I said, it means, you know, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I tried to hurry <laughs> it uh, but no, you're, you're talking about some very important things that your organization, uh, you know, helps people weigh the facts on. And, and, you know, talk to us about some of the issues that are ongoing right now that impact our community. So that just actually access to the ballot. We know that people that uh, different parties talk about being big tent, but what we know is that what they are doing is investing in being able to call the voter list so that there's a smaller pool of voters and that if you make it hard for people to get out to the to the ballot box, if you restrict access to all eligible voters, that makes it better for one side or the other. Now, WTF is what we call polypartisan. At our um, first meet and greet event, 
we had Dems, Republicans, Green Party, and Libertarians, and no fights broke out in the room. Everyone was cordial. So it can be done. We, though, as the people with the power, we need to understand that balance of power. We are thinking that it's the politicians that have the power. We are their boss, and we really have to take that power back. You know, I think about some of the issues that, that, you know, I'm aware of here in Texas. And I think about some of those things that, you know, impact us across the nation. COVID, you know, is really not a, a, a I guess you could say, a political issue. It, it, they try to make it a political football there for a while. But tell us how COVID has impacted your organization and, and how you managed to work through it. Well, it's knock wood or whatever it is, because we just made it in um, with our primary in 2020 before the shutdown. So we pivoted immediately. And that's what it's shown you that you need to do. As an entrepreneur, you have to be nimble. So we pivoted immediately to our forms virtually. And actually there's a there, there's a part of it because that takes away the rental of a, a of a venue. Um, but then there's some other costs involved in some um, but you just have to be nimble. You have to say, you have a commitment to your business. This is an important service that we're bringing. And so we're going to shift and do it however it is we need to get it done. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that you push through and are continuing doing the work in the community. So talk to us a little bit about your, your constituency, your, your customer base. How do you go about uh, reaching the folks that need your services? So we have a social media presence, of course. Um, when we, before COVID came and we were, we are known, our flagship, Starship uh, offering it, is our voter forums. Mm -hmm. And we took the forums to the people. Typically, I, I don't know what happens in Texas, but typically the forums are in the other neighborhood. Well, you need the votes of the people in this neighborhood. So you want to come to the hood and talk to the people. So that was what we did. We took, we brought them there. So we demystified that process. Yes, they can come here and nothing is happening to them and nothing is happening to you. You can talk to those people. So we just opened the process and demystified it. Um, I think what we, we don't know historically is that we were making great strides in in an election for senator centuries ago. And then, you know, then then we know what happened. Jim Crow happened. And so that just really took down our electoral activity. We have to bring that back up. We have to be um, conscious and, and uh, about where we're spending our money and where we're voting. That slate card is not your friend. You need to find out who the best candidate is for each race. And they may not be from the same party. Right. And I'm glad to hear that. So we're, it sounds to me like we're bringing these forums out of, you know, the churches, out of the, uh, you know, civic organ or out of the religious organizations and bringing them more into the public, into public view. So we're not just seeing politicians, you know, the Sunday before Election Day, right? right? We're seeing them a little bit right. more throughout the process. Exactly. Uh, tell us, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges in in getting, you know, the the I guess the the public to uh, to engage in, in politics these days? Getting people to understand, again, that balance of power, because if you feel like you don't have any power or weight in a process, then you don't participate in it. So we need to have people understand that actually, um, well, so we know Alice Walker tells us the best way to take power from someone is to convince them that they don't have it. And so we can say that the politicians have done a good job at that. They have convinced right. the people that the power is with them. What we are doing is letting you know they need your vote to get into office. And so that should cost something. That should be what, what's going to happen for my community. Mm -hmm. So just and being able to have those kind of conversations, being able to advocate for your issues. Those are important skills that we teach. Okay, so so talk to us about in between time, right? You mentioned, you know, to me earlier that, you know, especially in the black community, we got out, we voted for Obama, right? We came out in droves, we waited in lines, we, you know, we brought each other water and food, you know, and, and we really got on board. And then all of that sort of went downhill. How are you engaging uh, the public to, to, you know, have that same spirit in, in non-presidential campaigns and, and others? 
Well, most definitely, like I said, we are out there in the primary. We are out, and when we bring the people to the table at our forum, one of the questions we ask is if they are committed to coming back and talking to the people. So we got them on tape. You said you were gonna come and talk to us and we are all about transparency and accountability in government. So we, we are opening up that process. What actually is your county commissioner supposed to do? So that you know when you have audience with that person that you're not asking them about concerns that your city council person does. We're just educated which is just critical. Once we get the information, we can weld the power. So now talk to us about, now I'm a regular citizen and you know, I vote for folks at different you know, uh, elections, you know, and then I kind of walk away, go sit on my couch and you know, watch television, let the days go by. But during that time, you know, decisions are being made that could impact me, impact my family, impact businesses, impact my community. Uh, you know, what are some of the things that I should be doing as a regular citizen to ensure that I'm holding those folks accountable? So make sure that you are tuned into what's going on. COVID has done some good things. A lot of electoral and government meetings have gone virtual. So tune in, listen to what it is that they're saying. Make sure that you are on um, tell you okay this is the jurisdiction you live in this is what is under this elected officials purview we're just educating and getting the information out so that people again are able to use the franchise to make their lives better what we do is empower the most diverse and inclusive voter base on the planet with the acumen they need to amplify their political proficiency you know, th this is very much a business, right? The, in, in what you engaged in, in the business of engaging the community and making sure that, you know, they do their civic duty, uh, which is, is to vote. Talk to us about some of the business techniques that you put into play uh, since starting uh, WTF. Well, it, my sales skills have really come into play because initially um, people were, we do a voter series form, so we don't have everybody come out on one night and just wave and say hello and kiss babies. We ask some really hard hitting questions, again, that are pertinent to what that person is saying. If you say you wanna be the county commissioner, we know you have to deal with budgets. What, what is your background? Do you have a business background? Why would you make a good county commissioner? If you're a judge, have you had any trial experience? You would be surprised. There are some that have not had any. What, um, one of the questions I always ask is, what was your community involvement before you decided to run for office? That's telling. So just to get that information out to people, um, the modes that we're using to do that. And then we're also opening up a different field to people that we're typically closed from. What we are understanding is, especially as an African-American woman, we have been the deal maker and the change maker in countless elections. But that support from the party when I decide I want to throw my hat in the ring is not there. How many people do you see cutting turf for a, even to walk for a, do a walk or lit drop for a local candidate that look like us? We're opening those sorts of doors for folks. Right. And, and you know, I, I take a look at, you know, say the state of Georgia, uh, where they, you know, had an amazing uh, turnout, amazing, uh, you know, advocacy going on, you know, talk to us a little bit more about how individuals can, you know, I, I know that we talk about engaging. And, and Relational and, organizing is so critical. You and I can sit and expound all day, but if your neighbor comes and knocks on your door, your neighbor that you, you know, you walked through the grocery store with that you all have complained about the sidewalk not being clear, comes and talks to you about a city council candidate, that carries a lot of weight. That carries more weight than, than someone else talking to them. So relational organizing is critically important. Another thing that we have to understand is that the Georgia miracle did not happen overnight. They have been working on that thing. Um, and it's, it, it's phenomenal. We got two um, senatorial candidates, two progressive people, two people who are would be more apt to listen to what is going on in in their state so that they can make changes for people. And we just we just know that that's the critical piece. You have to have someone who understands the problem to be able to fix it. You know, the, the, the events that occurred 
last year with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, it really brought to light that there are still some systemic issues that impact our community the most. Uh, can you talk to us about our specific, uh, what our specific approach should be when it comes to addressing those types of issues? Definitely. So we are talking about police conduct and the police chief, but guess who the police chief's boss is in most jurisdictions in, in Ohio is the mayor. So you are the mayor's boss. So you decide who the mayor is, do your homework, where does, what, what is his, your, his or her stance on what the police should and should not do? What is their stance on, um, on whether or not, so there, there's a lot of issues that are at, at play as far as police accountability. One of the things that, um, I have a friend who is a part of a, what she calls the um, unintended sorority. She had a son that was killed by the police. And to still have that police officer out on the streets with, with countless um, reports of, of um, bad conduct. I mean, if he burned the fries that many times at McDonald's, he would be fired, but yet we send him out with a badge and a gun. Those are the kind of things that we have to fix. And you, you know, uh, you're, we're gonna kind of move into like the business approach, black owned businesses. What are some of the things that black owned businesses can do to support organizations like yours? Definitely, definitely educate your clientele. One of the things, well, we talked about the childcare deserts and that 50% of the people live in childcare deserts and $7 billion is missing from our economy. Educate the people that come to your child care center on that. Do a family engagement night that includes some civic engagement information. We would definitely, we have a, a program called ABCs and 123s, which tie in the government programs and who decides them so that you know that when you're voting. Because one of the things we know in Ohio in Title 20, which is child care, that you can't apply for Title 20 until you have a job. Well, how am I going to how am I going to go apply if I don't have child care? So, again, people closest to the pain being closest to the power would know that is not the way to run that program. So you have to get in there and do your homework. You have to be in there questioning. You have to be in there pushing. And then this leads me to another question when it comes to, you know, voting rights, uh, particularly in our community, where we have, you know, a, a, a significant portion of, of convicted felons or folks that have a felony record. Uh, many of them have been uh, denied that right to vote or, or to get that vote, voter's right restored. Uh, what should we be doing to, to help uh, in, in helping those folks get their voter's right restored? So definitely be reaching out to your senator, talking to them about Senate Bill 1, because one of the tenets in that is to eliminate um, that felon voter disenfranchisement. Because what other right is there that once you have served your time, you don't get? And so that's what's kind of frustrating when people talk about the vote not being important, because it's money and time spent on stopping someone to do, from doing something that was not important. So don't, you know, just don't fall for that okie doke. We need to be out there pushing to get the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Act passed and making for that- For the People the Act and the John Lewis Vote. Because when you think about it, a lot of these, you know, rules and laws and, and customs are, are legacy uh, leftover, you know, laws from, from an era in which we didn't have full rights anyway. Uh, so it seems like, you know, we, we should be to that point where we can restore folks. Uh, right. So I definitely appreciate uh, your points on that. I also want to talk about, we, we, we touched on the business of, of adv advocacy and, and political engagement, uh, you know, and then, you know, we, we alluded to social media, but we didn't go into it. Talk to us about your social media following. Talk to us about your social media engagement and how you keep folks moving. So we are out there um, giving information on on like platforms. If there are progressive or conservative um, political groups, we're out there building relationship with them. Again, um, we have relationship with Democrats, Republicans, 
Green Party folk, libertarian people, because we need to get all of that information out. And one of the other things that we need to understand in our community is that that's a machine. Don't allow your vote to just be used and nobody that brought any of that to you to the table looks anything like you. Right. There are There's printing that needs to be done. There's t-shirts that are made, all of those kind of things. And we need to start holding electives accountable for, okay, you want the vote of this community. Well, you, some of those dollars from your campaign need to come to that community. I agree 100%. I know that, you know, there's millions in some cases, I think there have been records set on yeah. uh, campaign spending. Yeah. But then when you take a look at the businesses that were involved in the supplier diversity channel or the supply chain. They don't uh, look like you or I. Yeah, they're non-existent in some cases. So uh, that's definitely something that uh, I think we as a chamber can, can start to take a look at during the, the campaign seasons is, is how much are you spending uh, with black owned businesses and then hold yeah. them accountable uh, yeah. based on the numbers rather than the, the emotion, right? So uh, I definitely like that tip. Uh, so, with, with again, because what I want to get to is, is also your following on social media and your reach. You know, you're not just an Ohio-based organization, right? You have a reach that extends beyond Ohio, correct? That is definitely what we're working on. Like I said, we um, started out in Central Ohio, um, migrating to Northeastern Ohio, but we're definitely looking to. Uh, we just did a. a session, we called it digital dialogue called Run the World. And we had uh, women from Philadelphia, we had electeds from all over Ohio, because we are wanting to expand that reach. What we're doing is unique in the marketplace, because we are not a D or an R. Right. Uh, we are not um, married to a single party, we are married to the betterment of our folk. So I mean, that's revolutionary in this space. Right. And, and uh, I'm glad to hear that because, you know, these movements, uh, whether they're political or, or socially entrepreneurial, you know, they start small and, and then they begin to work their way, you know, throughout the United States and in some cases around the world, uh, hence run the world. And so uh, I'm glad to see that we're making some progress in, 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 you know, engaging folks and then spreading your model beyond uh, the borders of, of Ohio. So yeah. I'm definitely glad to hear that. All right, so, so I want you to uh, close us out. We're gonna uh, uh, move on to uh, some information from the chamber, but I want you to close us out with some, some last words on, on uh, you know, a uh, little bit more about uh, what you plan to do next. And then also how folks that want to, you know, take up entrepreneurship in this space, what they might uh, do as well. Okay, definitely. Um... Go to our website, waythefacts.org, follow us on social. I can provide that information to you so you can put it on the site. Um, we, are, we are wanting to expand our people's electoral influence and we wanna do that again, married with um, expanding our economic reach. And that can, I have a two-year-old grandson and I, I am committed to being able to tell him what used to happen. And, and him saying, me, me for real? And yes, because we're going to make some changes. I promise that little that little man that, and that's what we're going to do. Love it. I love it. So we'll get your social media information. We'll get your website information. We'll uh, tag that along with this video as Great. well. And then we'll thank continue you. And to thank share you so more. much for the opportunity. Lisa Freeman Williamson of WTF, Weigh the Facts. Uh, that's definitely catchy. And it's going to be around for a long time. So we definitely thank you. Uh, from the USBC. I'm going to turn our attention uh, to a little bit of information we're going to share about the chamber uh, for the next couple of weeks. And uh, just give me one second here to bring it all up. And basically, just wanted to share that these resources that we provided, such as Fridays with Phil uh, from the USBC on the Eureka platform, is brought to you by the USBC Community Economic Development Corporation. So we have a lot of programming that we put on throughout the week, throughout the month, and want to make sure that we uh, impact the Black business community and entrepreneurs as much as possible. So definitely stay tuned uh, for more to come from the USBC, CEDC. Uh, next up, I want to share with you all uh, some information about our virtual webinars and on-demand resources. Videos like this one will be uh, housed on the U.S. Black Chamber's website so that you can always watch them over and over again, learn more and reach out to some of the speakers as well. So make sure if you want to go and see some of our content, 
go to uh, usblackchambers.org forward slash webinars. And then lastly, if you'd like to join the USBC or to learn more about our uh, weekly webinar series, uh, definitely go to usblackchambers.org forward slash CARES Act. Uh, and then for any up-to-date information and resources on the CARES Act, as well as uh, navigating through COVID-19, yes, we are still in a COVID-19 era, uh, please make sure uh, to visit this website and get more information. So that was our Fridays with Phil for today. Lisa Freeman Williamson was awesome. Uh, we look forward to having more Fridays with Phil uh, with you all in the future. So definitely, definitely stay tuned. And in the meantime, I wanna make sure that you all stay connected with us, go out to our website, uh, join our mailing list, uh, make sure that you're listed uh, in our mailing list, uh, provide us with your email ad address and, and we'll make sure to add you to that mailing list. You'll learn more about uh, these opportunities in the future as well. So until the next time we talk, I'm Philip Dunn, your host with Fridays with Phil. And remember, it's our time. Thank you all. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm.